Hey everyone, welcome to Evening Church. We're glad that you decided to tune in. Happy Mother's Day to all the mothers out there. We're glad that uh, you have been celebrated today for the significance that you've had in people's lives. We're currently at Jade's mum and dad's house. As you can tell, we're not in uh, our usual setup, but we're here to encourage and affirm uh, her mum and her grandma in uh, the support and the just the, the foundation that they've had in her life. Um, and we're gonna continue on in our gospel series Tonight we're actually going to be finishing up our series this week, which is really exciting. And, and last week we saw that Jesus came and had a mission and a vision over uh, what he was doing here, which was to pay the price for sin, uh, to win the victory over death, and to uh, usher in the kingdom, to bring the kingdom. And uh, this week we're going to be looking at what happens when we respond to that. How do we live now under that reality, under that truth? Right? So we've seen that uh, Jesus has come and, and made this accessible to us. And if we uh, turn to him, if we put our trust in him, uh, submit to the lordship of Christ, uh, we can live in that reality. Uh, but what does living in that reality look like? How do we respond as people here and now to that? And uh, tonight's message is titled, Now But Not Yet. Now But Not Yet. And we're going to be looking at this concept when it comes to the kingdom of God and what he's doing and how he can shape us and, and into interact with reality now and not yet. And so there's two key areas that I want to look at tonight, two passage or two bits of scripture that kind of demonstrate this idea that things are happening now, things are accessible now, things about what Jesus has done is accessible now for us, but it's also not yet. And that's kind of a weird uh, way to describe what's going on, but there's not really another way to look at it. I mean, there are some things that are accessible now, but also not yet. There are some things that have happened now, but are also are yet to come. And I think one way to really capture that idea is from the book of Revelation. And we see that where Jesus says, I am the Alpha and the Omega, who is and was and who is to come, the Almighty. And we see there, we see this past, present and future tense kind of playing out who who was and is and is to come and that kind of captures the kingdom right now we're in this position where there has been great things there are great things happening but there's still more to happen and i want to look at two uh, particular scripture areas that kind of demonstrate this and what does that mean for us well firstly in our holiness our sanctification you see we are fully sanctified now but we are also being sanctified this is a process that we will be undertaking the rest of our lives and then we will be made complete we will have full sanctification truly uh, when we enter on to the other side of heaven and this is this kind of concept of now now we are sanctified but by the same token we're not fully sanctified we're not sanctified yet we are seen as pure and holy before God right at this very moment in Christ Jesus but we are continually being made more holy. Right? I want to look at two scriptures that kind of describe that. The first one is in 2 Corinthians 3, and it says this, And we all, with unveiled face, beholding the glory of the Lord, are being transformed into the same image from one degree of glory to another. For this comes from the Lord, who is the Spirit. And what this passage is telling us is that through the Holy Spirit, when we invite the Holy Spirit into our lives, He is on a mission. He is gradually transforming us. We are not fully sanctified to His desires just yet. We are being shaped. This is something that has not yet happened fully. But by the same token, we see in 2 Corinthians 5 that we have been fully changed, fully transformed. The old is gone, the new has come. Therefore, if anyone is in Christ... He is a new creation. The new creation has come. The old is gone. The new is here. So we get this sense of now, but not yet. We are new creations right now in this moment. But we're not fully there yet. Now, but not yet. And the second thing that I think we see now and not yet is actually in the kingdom being ushered in. The kingdom being ushered in. How does that look? Well, I think a great turn of phrase is this, that the kingdom is inaugurated, but it's not consummated. Right? So Jesus has been inaugurated as the king, but he will only be consummated as our king when he returns. Let me show you some scripture. In Luke chapter 17, we see Jesus talking about the kingdom being here now. In verse 21, it says, 
nor will people say, here it is or there it is, because the kingdom of God is in your midst. And that's Jesus referring to himself. He is the kingdom. It's here. It's arrived. The kingdom is here. But by the same token, we see that it's not fully realized at this point in time. If you continue on in Luke 19, you see verse 11 say, As they heard these things, he proceeded to tell a parable because he was near Jerusalem and because they supposed that the kingdom of God was to appear to appear immediately. You see, Jesus knows in this moment that they're expecting that the kingdom was going to be in its full fruition, right? Full, fully there. But Jesus talks in parables and teaches them that it's not quite there yet. It's now. The kingdom is here, but not yet. It's, it's, it's right accessible now, but not all the benefits of the kingdom are going to be here because the kingdom has been inaugurated and not consummated. And this is the reality we live in at this point in time, that we have access to full freedom. We have access to, to building the kingdom. We have access to knowing we are fully seen as holy, but by the same token, not fully, because we're still in a broken world. We're still in a world where uh, humanity is uh, living crookedly, and uh, we are on this journey of now but not yet. We are assured of these things, and we have access and glimpses of these things right now, but not yet fully. They haven't been perfected or come to complete fruition now. And I love this quote from George Eldon Ladd, who uh, talks about the kingdom of God. And let me just read it to you. He says this, Love is that gift of the Spirit above all others, which will characterize our perfected fellowship in the age to come. This love we now enjoy. And the church on earth will be a colony of heaven, enjoying in advance the life of the age to come. I love this idea that the church is a colony of heaven, that when Jesus coming and tearing the veil and making God accessible and having things now, but not yet, we see that the church can be this fellowship of, of love and grace and truth and kingdom building. And it's a glimpse of what we're gonna see later. We have it now, but not fully yet. So how do we live this out now? How does this come into fruition in our lives? Well. Um, there's a couple of things I want to encourage you in is firstly live in the mystery you know this isn't a concept that makes complete sense to us and uh, I think that's okay I think we can live in a sense of mystery about how this plays out you know uh, we we have a sense in which a lot of things are assured for us now but we don't really understand how they're assured or completely understand why they might not be assured in other people's lives or how things are coming to fruition for us or not for someone else or there's a there's a deep sense of mystery about how this plays out and I think it's okay to live in that tension and actually appreciate the mysterious nature of the now and not yet kingdom and the second thing I want to uh, challenge you with is um, Find your place in that um, measurement, I guess. Uh, if there is things that you think are very much for us now, um, I challenge you just to consider, you know, what are you actually looking forward to on uh, the other side of heaven when Jesus returns? And by the same token, if you are so fixated on what life looks like uh, when we meet Jesus again, I want to encourage you, what's, what are some things that you can be doing to know that you're living in the now of the kingdom? Right, uh, whatever end of the spectrum I guess that you're on, I, I want to challenge you to try and maybe edge a little bit more to the middle, to live in that tension, to live in that mystery. So I just hope this has blessed you tonight, church. Um, I've been excited to be able to progress through this series with you about the fullness of God's narrative, and uh, we're excited to start a new series uh, very shortly. But uh, let me just pray for us to finish, and uh, we'll finish up for the night. Lord, just be with us as we enter into um, a new season and uh, a new series at church. Lord, just help us now uh, to live in the fullness of your gospel message. Lord, just help us appreciate uh, the nuances and the, the, the nature of who you are and the story that you're writing here. God, and we want to be part of that. We want to be part of your story. Uh, Lord, help us appreciate um, who you are in this, who Christ is, and how we partake in that story, God. We thank you that you're loving, that you're kind, that you're merciful. Uh, Lord, even when we uh, go astray, when we sin, when we uh, miss the mark, Lord, that you are gracious and mighty to save. Uh, Lord, and we just pray that uh, you help us build your kingdom uh, in this place.
Lord, we love you. We want to serve you. We want to worship you. We want to see your name lifted high above all else. And it's in the powerful name of Jesus that we pray. Amen.